How we doing, friends? My name is Eric, and today I'm going to carve a spoon out of this big old honking apple branch that I cut down in my mom's backyard. Uh, and I think it's something I want to walk you through, because spoon carving is a delightful process, so if it's something you want to learn more about, stick around, and uh, we'll talk about it. So let's get to it. All right, so right off the jump, here's the situation. As I said, I've got this branch that I cut down uh, from my mother's apple tree. It's dead, so it's not green, uh, which means that I can power carve it, which is what I'm going to plan to do. I'm going to process it using some hand tools, because I'm not going to make a, a six-foot-long spoon. Uh, but what I will do is I'll cut it off somewhere in here to use kind of a curvy piece of this to give the form a little bit more interest. Uh, I'll kind of rough it out with a hatchet, and then I will dive into the power tools. Uh, but just so you know, my tooling situation right now is, get that balanced, uh, is I've just got an old hatchet that I think belonged to my grandfather. I don't know, I found it in the shed a couple of years ago and cleaned it up. Uh, so I'll use this to remove a lot of the material. You can use this if you like. Uh, it's, it's a pretty pleasant tool to use, and it makes for very quick removal of stock. Uh, and it doesn't create dust, which is nice. But it's limited in its uh, abilities. And then I've got some tools from Sabretooth, which I like to use with uh, an angle grinder. Not an angle grinder, what am I talking about? With a flex shaft or, or a, a Dremel tool of some kind. And so I'm going to go ahead and use these to do most of the actual shaping and the refining, and then I'll just switch over to sandpaper. We'll talk about those more briefly, though. So first, let's process this stick down to size so that it's an actual usable chunk of wood. All right, so what I've got here is just a cookie from an old oak tree. It's just a, a, you know, a reasonably flat piece of end grain that I can chop on. Now I'm doing this on the floor because I am up at my mother's house for the holidays. So I don't have a workbench up here, but I have a hatchet. I've got a cookie, something that won't dull the edge of my blade as I chop into it. I got this stick. So we're going to see what we can do with it. Now, like I said before, I kind of want to take this section of wood I don't know why. Uh, this is a really nice straight section over here. There are some straight sections over here as well. But something about this curve might end up being nice, could end up being an interesting spoon. So I'm going to go for it and see what happens. Uh, I'm just going to, I don't know, maybe give myself somewhere in the 12 to 14 inch range over here. And I'm going to do these V cuts. Just like I was chopping down a tree. So I've got this nice curve, I've got this nice little bit, which I think is probably going to end up being where the bowl is, is somewhere in here. Uh, and I'm just going to start to remove material and bark and kind of see where it goes. Uh, and see if I can get an idea of what this form is going to end up being in the end. Alright, now that I've got this cut to length, what I decided to do was just go slap together this little thing real quick. It was mostly something I had lying uh, in the shed. I just, <laughs> I didn't feel like being on the floor the entire time I shaped this. Uh, so it'll get the job done. Uh, so let's see what kind of shape we can pull out of this. So like I said, my bowl is probably going to be out of this section right here. Uh, and then my handle will come up this way. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this knot back here. It will be, well, it's not really a knot. This, this branch section back here. Um, so we're going to see what ends up coming out of it. I'm just going to rough it out with this, uh, and then we'll move to the grinder in order to remove, uh, more of the shape and refine the form. But, so I'm going to chop along the grain with this, and it really is just starting to remove where I know material won't be. Little by little, see if we can square it up a little bit. Normally I would do this on a bandsaw, but again, uh, I'm at my mother's house, so I don't have one. And also just trying to do it with a limited amount of tool sets so that folks can actually get into this without buying a lot of tools. Something I always tell my students is I, you do have to buy tools. I understand that, but at some point you have to stop buying tools and actually buy wood. 
because you can have all the tools in the world you want, but if you don't have any wood to make things, what's the dang point? Uh, now, of course, again, I found this piece of wood, so you can also do that. That is an option, but either way, you have to have material to work. Now, when you are splitting things off, things like this will happen where a chunk will split out. That's not the end of the world. I mean, this is why we rough it out so that we have an idea of where it's going, because you don't want that to happen towards the end. Now this is the bottom of my bowl, so there you go. Now this little bit in here, that little V cut right there, I don't know if you can see that very well, that's the pith, meaning that's the dead center of that branch. So that was gonna come out anyway. You can always tell that because it's a little bit darker right there than the rest of the branch. So now that that's out, uh, we should be pretty smooth sailing in here. Now, one thing to think about when you're doing any kind of sculptural work, whether spoons, figurative work, clay, doesn't matter. You always want to work the entire form simultaneously. So what I don't want to do is focus on the bowl and neglect the handle because they both inform one another. So this is, you know, roughed out-ish. So I'm going to switch to focusing on the handle. I'm not going to take any more off of here until later on. Now, another thing you'll notice, you'll notice I'm holding the hatchet up here so that it's more of a snapping action than it is an entire arm action, right? If I'm holding down here, boy, howdy, is that an arm workout. But down here, it really is just, it's almost with like three fingers that I'm holding it. And it's almost tossing the hatchet at the wood. That's going to allow the hatchet to do the work instead of forcing you to come down hard with every single chop and holding it up here is going to allow you to make more accurate cuts as well. Now I've got a squeaky chair, which I'm sure sounds fantastic on video. Everybody likes to hear a squeaky chair, but it is what it is, man. Kind of squaring up now. Now I've got a little bit of a left hook in this piece of wood, right? So I'm thinking about how the spoon wants to be. Maybe this is a right-handed spoon because it curves. Now the other thing that's happening is, as I am right now, this also has a mild twist in it, which could be an interesting design feature, right? I don't know if you can really see this too terribly well, but this line runs from this corner and then runs a little bit across the face. Uh, and so, Again, that could be an interesting design feature to just have a very mild twist in it down to the bowl. So I might actually keep that and emphasize it. I'm, again, not sure. The whole point of this exercise is to kind of look at the wood and be in communication with the wood or the material, whatever material you choose, uh, while you're figuring out what the form is going to be. It kind of reveals itself over time. So we'll keep going. We'll keep roughing this out. and We're going to see where it ends up going. What's up, Stinks? Can I see a spoon? Sure, it's not a spoon yet. It's still just a stick, but it's gonna be a spoon. Oh, it's so woody. It's so woody. How? And it's, it's so woody. Because I keep chopping things off. Watch, ready? All right, so uh, I've got a rough idea of where this spoon is going. Now I know it looks very amorphous, blob-like, and kind of snakish right now. Um, but that's because it's just roughed out and everything is very rounded over. Everything is very, I don't know, fluffy. It's pretty fat. Um, and a good spoon, a good spoon design, I should say, at least in my opinion, is all about facets. The flats and the corners, not so much the rounds, because every spoon is going to have a round. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to my rotary carver, right? This is pretty good, I think, for roughing out. I'm going to really need to start to uh, uh, rough in the form now. Uh, and so what I'm going to use are these rotary bits. These are the extra course. And what this is going to allow me to do is remove material quickly, but more importantly, put a flat surface on here. Now these are the half inch uh, sleeves. Uh, 
I've also got the one inch sleeves in the course uh, that I can use to get a wider surface, which is really nice. So I'm gonna get this set up. Uh, again, being at my mother's house, I'm just gonna have this dangling over here from a cross section above me, uh, and then I can continue to work right here. Um, but it really is just gonna be roughing in the form now using these bits and starting to refine this uh, actual material. And this is where my handle is going to end. So all of this is waste, but I'm going to hold on to it just for now so that I have a place to grab. Uh, and we'll see where it goes now. All right. Now, like I said before, I've got my rotary carver, my flex shaft hooked up here. I've got a foot pedal down here. Okay. Uh, and so I'm going to put my carving bit in here and get to work on this. Before I do that, two things I want to talk about. Number one, this is my set of power carving bits, okay? Uh, lots of different bits in here, all the way down uh, to these 1 8 burrs, which are phenomenal. I actually have a, a spoon carving set in partnership with Sabretooth that you can pick up four different burrs to get you started if it's something that you want to do. Uh, but I do have these other tools in here as well, so I'm going to use those uh, and see where this ends up going. Again, I'm going to start off with these two sleeves. This is the extra course, and then this green one is the course, half inch, one inch, uh, and that should do me really well for a lot of what I need to do. And second thing I want to just mention real quick, safety. Um, we're power carving. It does throw off a lot of dust. Make sure you got eyes. Make sure you got a mask. And uh, that way, you keep your eyes and your lungs safe. If you do want to wear ear protection, that's totally fine. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I usually just have my earbuds in while I'm working in the shop anyway. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and throw those in. And then, you know, we'll get to it. I am still using this roughing bit in here, um, but I've got this spoon close to somewhere that I like it. Uh, this handle has that mild rotation we kind of talked about before. I tend to like three-sided handles. There's something about like a soft triangle that really is, is pleasant to hold, and it's a little bit odd, uh, so I like that. This handle, this is something I'm not sure I like, that this handle comes down and then this head kind of kicks out to the side. But here's one thing that's nice about it. To bring that up, like, it kind of works really nicely as a taste. Nicely. It works really nice as a tasting spoon. Um, so we're going to see where that ends up going. The heel is starting, like, I like the line here. One thing I don't like is the actual shape of the bowl. So I'm going to see if I can't figure out how to work within the confines of that. Um, but for right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to this. It's a little bit less aggressive. It's a little bit wider. This is the one inch coarse sleeve. Uh, so I'm gonna come in here and start cleaning this up before I move into even finer sleeves. Uh, and I'm not gonna hollow out the bowl for now until I kind of get everything where I want it because the bowl shape is set uh, by the rest of the parameters of the piece of wood. So let's see what else can happen here. One thing I do want to point out when I'm using uh, this sleeve is that I'm more worried about refining the surfaces than I am the lines. The lines are, of course, still important, but you get all of your surfaces correct, then your lines are going to start to form themselves pretty naturally. There are some details in here, like I want to come in here and I want to ease the transitions in here and thin that up and make that line a little bit more delicate, which I will do with a less aggressive bit. Uh, so for right now, I'm just doing things like finish shaping the bowl and kind of getting that form correct. Uh, and then I'll come in here with a fine bit and start to refine that. And then I'll come in here and I'll shape this bowl. Now, this bowl is a strange dimension. It's kind of long and, and ovular. That's okay. The bowl is actually going to be a little bit deep. So it'll kind of work out to be 
I don't know, just odd, interesting. Hopefully I can kind of make a nice transition in here into the bowl so it has some fluidity and it's not just kind of a dead stop and shootout, but we're gonna see where that goes. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how this looks and feels at the moment. It's definitely got a very odd shape to it, which I kind of dig. So I'm going to just, um, maybe I'll, I'll retouch this bowl a little bit, but I think either now or very, very soon, I'm gonna switch over to a fine bit and start to refine and consider where that bowl is gonna be. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start cutting in the bowl now using this. This is uh, a coarse cutting wheel and I can really just kind of get in there and cut straight up, which is really nice with this. Then I'll come in with some other burrs and I'll rework that. But I'm just gonna give myself just a very slight lip around this for right now, um, somewhere in the range of an eighth. And then that's gonna allow me to know roughly where not to cut. And then when I actually smooth the bowl out, I can bring that right up to the lip. But for right now, that's going to be my rough guide. I don't have a depth guide. That's just going to be by look and by feel. Uh, but obviously, I don't want to go much deeper than maybe a quarter inch away from that. So, let's get busy. So, don't mind the the beard indent from the mask. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty happy with what this looks like right now, where it's going. This line is pretty sweet. I've still got this extra bit on here. I'm gonna cut off and finish shaping that. But this line overall is pretty sweet. It's pretty delicate. It feels nice to hold in a hand like that. I could definitely see this as a stirring spoon. Uh, it's definitely a right-handed spoon. It doesn't make much sense because of this bend to be a left-handed spoon. But overall, I think it's pretty good. This bowl needs just a touch more refinement. And you saw that I switched over to this large bit. And that's for two reasons. One, because this is uh, an ultra-frying grit, so I'm getting a much finer surface on here. But also having the large bit actually does not allow me to dig very deep because it, I can't physically just dig super deep on here. It actually spreads out that cutting action so I get a cleaner bowl. So using a larger bit will help on that to an extent, of course. Uh, and so I think that's pretty good. Like it feels pretty smooth. The handle feels great. The bowl feels great. I'm going to maybe get a smaller bit out and maybe touch up some of these transitions, but I think it's pretty close to sanding. So I'm going to do that. So pretty much done looks good, it feels good. Uh, so you can see, I mean, the lines are, the lines are decent. <laughs> I still don't know about this weird kick of the angle of the, the spoon, but I really like this line. And same thing, I really like this line over here. It's got just kind of an elegant, almost like a Gandalf pipe uh, uh, line to it, which I really dig. It's comfortable to hold in the right hand as a stirring stick could easily work as just like a little soup spoon uh, in the kitchen, which is what I like about spoons this size, kind of in that mid-range spoon. Again, that, that curve is really gentle. So I'm just hitting it with a little 220 now uh, to finish cleaning it up. And then what I'll do is I'll actually wet this uh, with just a wet paper towel to raise the grain, sand it one more time, and then I'll put a coat of mineral oil on it. And, Actually, I have no idea if I have mineral oil here uh, because I'm not at home, not up at my shop. So we'll see. Um, if I do have it, wonderful. If I don't, then I'll wait till I get home to put it on. But this is pretty much done. And I mean, we're talking, I don't know, what's it been? Two hours, maybe? Maybe. Um, you know, from hatchet to, to finished product. So it's, uh, it's a good little project to to take up an afternoon and enjoy working on. Um, so that's about it. I mean, it really is just an exploratory process. One thing I noticed just a moment ago, if 
you look at that right there, so you can see that little ring in there. That's the pith I was talking about when I was talking before, um, when I was first roughing it out. So, again, the pith can stay in there. That's not really a big deal. I just, I don't often see that because, uh, frankly, I don't often use uh, just the felled timber from, from the outside piece. I'm usually using uh, dried timber. So, there you go. Looks pretty good, feels pretty good, and that, I think, is actually just as important as how it actually feels when you pick it up and you hold it in your hand. Feels smooth, the line feels nice, feels good to kind of hold, use as a stirring spoon, so that's it. All right, so I did have to run out and grab some finish, but just so you know what this is, this is just uh, Butcher Block Conditioner get it at the big box stores. It's basically just mineral oil and beeswax. Um, you can use straight mineral oil. You can also just use beeswax. People use different things. Some folks just leave them unfinished. That's fine as well. Uh, I just like to use this because it brings out the grain a little bit and gives it a little bit more water resistance. So I'm going to put this on here. Uh, and so this is just really easy. It's just a wipe on, wipe off, one hit thing. Um, if I really want it to be super shiny, uh, I could hit it with a just straight coat of beeswax after I hit it with a coat of oil. But 99.999% of the time, I just hit it with one coat of this, and I'm good to go. So, just rub it in, rub it off, done. The thing about Apple is it's just got this really unique color that I really dig to it. And so, there you go. Done and done. Not a bad looking spoon, to be honest. I mean, I really like this side profile. It's it's just that little cock at like, what, 10 degrees, 5 degrees? Uh, that makes it a little bit funky. But I don't hate that. It's just a little bit strange. Um, but I really like the lines. And I mentioned that kind of triangular, that three-sided handle that I like to do. That's really nice. It feels really smooth. Again, it's going to be a really nice stirring spoon on there. So there you go. That's carving a spoon. Again, a couple of hours, not too long. Uh, I hope that you learned something from this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm just putting it out there as an option for you. Uh, and uh, in the future, maybe I'll bring you more purely educational content of this nature. But until then, friends, I appreciate you coming by, and I will catch you all on the flip. You go make a decisions as always. Peace.